This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 272 of Horse Tip Daily, a different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. This tip is sponsored by FeedXL. You can visit them at FeedXL.com. Enjoy today's tip. Hi, Glenn the Geek back with you from Lexington, Kentucky, and you're listening to Horse Tip Daily. Well, today's tip, we go back to our horse photographer, Scott Trees. Scott brings us another tip on horse photography, something that we all do here in the horse world, and I'll try and do better. We're always taking pictures of our horses and friends of horse on our horses and that kind of thing. So we're thrilled that Scott has agreed to be with us on a regular basis like this. As you know, he's been practicing his craft for over 36 years, and he's flown all over the world, does a variety of commercial shooting, including architecture, fashion, photojournalism, and, of course, horses. And we'll get to Scott's tip right here after we speak about Feed XL. You know, we care about what we feed our horses, and we're never quite sure if we're feeding the right thing or not. Too much of this, too little of that. So stop on over to FeedXL.com. It only takes a couple minutes to put in the information about your horse and what you're feeding your horse currently. And then it takes it takes the information that you give it, does some serious math to calculate if your horse's nutritional requirements are being met. You can see the results of this math display in a numerous ways, including an easy-to-read graph that highlights excesses and deficiencies in his diet. You can learn more about equine nutrition and how to feed your horse for the ultimate performance by, feeding, by visiting FeedXL's Learning Center. You can also listen to the tips that are being done here in Horse Tip Daily by Dr. Richards, who is the one who started FeedXL. She's a doctor of nutrition. So you can hop on over to FeedXL.com, see if you're feeding your horse correctly, too much, too little, You'll find out, and you'll probably save money by checking it out at FeedXL.com. Well, let's say hi to Scott Trees. Well, hi, Scott, and welcome to Horse Tip Daily. Hi, Glenn. How are you today? Good. You know what? Uh, With you, it's fun because you travel all over the world, and we get to do these tips, and I get to hear about even when we're not, you know, when we're off the air, we're talking about all the cool places you've been. Yet, you know, and, and everybody must be envious of all the traveling cool things you get to do. Yet, you've gone places I don't think I'd want to go. Well, not really. I mean, it, it's, yeah, some places, I think there was probably the one opportunity I had that my family went absolutely not was to go into <laughs> Uh, northern Iraq. Oh yeah, okay. Um, with, with the ambassador, <laughs> with the old, the ex ambassador of the United States, Iraq was going to meet the northern tribes, and they wanted me to go photo- photograph them. And so I called my family and said, "What do you think?" And got it immediately. You're not going. It's like, <laughs> oh darn. Um, you know that would that would have been history making. It would have been fun. And but you know, yeah. I mean, but most of the places I go really are unique and different. But I've never been never been afraid ever. So you haven't um, had to wear bulletproof vests too much when you're uh, no, I, yeah, now that's and I have to I have to quantify that too. I don't go to the places where I have to wear bulletproof vests. <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, you know, there there are not exactly a lot of horse things going on in that part of the world. But no, it's I've I've been incredibly lucky. I mean, I have had a tremendous, great, wonderful time doing what I do, and I have seen a lot of the world, and I've met a lot of interesting people, and you know, I basically learned that that in the places where you might be a little uncomfortable. I mean, in the city of the dead in Cairo or some of these places where I've been where, you know, I'm the only American around. I'm just, everywhere I go, I learn to say hello, please, and thank you in their language and and find that that and a smile and body language goes a long way and to, to getting you in, in situations and out of situations sometimes that might be um, uncomfortable, but I'm, well, I've been very fortunate. That way. You you have a you have a lot of hello, please, and thank yous in your vocabulary, then, because you've been a lot of places. Yeah, I do. I, unfortunately, <laughs> I, don't, I have to re- refresh myself all the time. And, you know, it's I I that's the one regret I do have. I mean, I took Spanish and German, and when I was in uh, a junior high and high school, and I remember some of them. But you know, we Americans are very spoiled that we don't have to learn another language, and we really should. Yeah, that's and, true. Uh, I, yeah. And that that's the one area where I wish I, I do okay, but I wish I I was better. Well, what are we talking about in the photography world today? Well, in the photography world, there's a lot of new stuff going on. Of course, you know this whole digital realm has has changed everything, and the next big change that's going on now is in the realm of 
a digital SLR camera is having built-in video in them. Oh, and, even your um, iPhone you're talking on right now has a half decent yeah, video iPhone, built into yeah. it. <laughs> really, it has, yeah, it shoots high-definition video. And I have a little Canon G10 that shoots beautiful video. And also my uh, the Canon 5D and the Canon 7D and the Nikon's come out with a new uh, 300DS. Uh, and all of these cameras shoot remarkable video. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, as far as the two primary camera manufacturers that are, that, are, that are doing this, which is Nikon and Canon. Um, their real market, as far as they are concerned, isn't necessarily the professional photography anymore, but Hollywood. Um, because a lot of production work now, uh, for example, uh, CSI is using the Nikon uh, D3X to shoot all of their low-light scenes. And so they've replaced a $100,000 Panavision camera with a $5,000 35-millimeter camera. Wow. And um, it's really opening up a whole new world of video access to uh, potential filmmakers, to uh, photographers, to videographers. And the whole industry is actually shifting into this new format. And the quality... Is remarkable. Well, and then um, and then it's first, so it's so much that a second half of that coming from my side of the co- coin is it's so much easier to share it now with YouTube and all the free video services oh, out there. I mean, absolutely, yeah. Facebook, you know, being one of the biggest, yeah, yeah. everything, and even your own website. I mean, and this is where you know, um, and, and of course, it's also opened it up for the people that say, say or do stupid things that don't want them shared on <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, that's true. But, but um, if you're you know, a teenager, it, it, please keep your clothes on. It's going to be everywhere. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Or, you know, if you are a celebrity and say the wrong thing, make sure you say it when there's nobody with phones or cameras around. But um, it's it's really changing and it's going to keep changing. And it's it's one of those things that, like I said, um, I have a little Canon G10, which is uh, a point and shoot, basically, but a very you know sophisticated point and shoot. And I love the fact that I can be somewhere and if I'm traveling or, or doing something and see something I like and go, oh, well, I'd like to get some video of that as well. And the neat part about it is, is that you can, all these cameras, you can use it on your recording device, which is either a compact flash card or an SD card of some sort, that you can shoot stills, switch over, shoot video. And in, and in many of the uh, higher end uh, pro server and pro video or, or digital cam- still cameras, you can actually shoot stills while you're shooting video. Or the flip side of that coin is that you can actually pull, certainly for the internet, you can pull good freeze frames off of the video to put on the internet. And so it's really going to change everything. And quite frankly, Glenn, I've been saying for, for many, many, many years now that when it comes to the point that you can pull high-quality still shots off of a video frame. It's going to change the photography world forever. And that for those of us who de- depend on timing and those kinds of things for our work, it's going to change it because more people will have the ability to to uh, get a better shot. And you won't see paparazzi out there click, 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 clicking away. They'll just be shooting and you know holding down the video button and then run back to their computer and grab the shot. So you think and we're, technology- we're wow, well, that's interesting. So you think we're just a couple of years away from basically the old-fashioned photography of uh, clicking uh, going away? Yeah, I, I don't think three to five, three, two to five tops. I mean, it's it's really going to change everything. And um, the biggest situation, one of the biggest differences between video and stills is that video doesn't have to have the resolution that a still shot has. I mean. For the most part, um, video is at 72 uh, DPI as opposed to a freeze frame, I mean, a still shot that's 300 DPI for publication. But high definition has changed a lot of that. And, you know, the, 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 um, the processors are getting better and the ability to record, you know, on devices is improving. And, and so it's not, we're not that far away. I mean, it's, it's going to happen and, and, and it'll be interesting to see how it happens I, and what it does. I think you and I have touched on this before. I think the, one of the biggest things in photography, hands down, that's changed photography for professionals and for everybody is the camera phone. Is the f- camera oh, yeah. in your phone? And the iPhones right. now, when they're coming out with such good cameras in there, uh, and and you're yeah, going to, mega- th- yeah, I know. You know, I have a a, a two year old half decent camera that's only four <laughs> megapixels. Right. So, uh, right. Well, but- my very first Canon digital was was uh, three megapixels. 
Yeah, and you paid, you know, $1,000 or more for it. So well, More than that, yeah, I paid a bunch of money for it. So, Actually, the very first digital cameras ever made were made by Nikon and Canon. They were 2.5 megapixels, and they were $30,000. Where do you think, and, you know, I know this is completely off topic, but you and I do that on these segments. Do you think that, that professional photographers will go away with the advent of uh, citizen journalism and everything else that's, that's happening today? No, what's going to happen, and it's interesting, um, in one of my seminars that I gave in Colorado recently, uh, the, the technical, one of the, the seven technical reps from Nikon was actually there, you know, letting us use the gear and, and talking about things. And basically, he was sharing that um, if you're a photographer and you're not willing to learn about video, you're already behind the curve. Um, what's going to happen is, that, say, for example, wedding photographers are going to be able to um, you know, shoot stills and shoot video at the same time. So it's just going to change the approach. I mean, people seem to modify and adapt, but I don't think photography per se is going to go away. I mean, ultimately, you still have to see the scene, you have to see the light, and you have to. But it's, I don't know how it's going to change it. I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see. I think it'll make it much more competitive, um, and much more difficult in some cases to make a living at it. And that's already happening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's definitely changed. And in the video world, when that first all came out, you know, my, my competition wasn't my fellow uh, pro pros. It was the neighbor next door that had a computer and a video camera. I mean, it's definitely changing that. And so I think there's still going to be a, a demand for artistic looks. I think there's going to be uh, a demand for, you know, what people can see. But I think it's the delivery method is just going to change. And, you know, you'll go down and sit down and play your video and grab the freeze frame and go, ah, there's the shot. Hmm. But as far as being able to take that shot and make a 16 by 20 to hang on your wall, we're still a ways away from that. And I'm not sure how long that will come. But certainly for the Internet, I mean, we're there now as far as being able to to take um, – I've got the uh, Canon XLH1 Pro video camera, and I've experimented with that while I'm shooting video. I've shot stills while I'm shooting video, or I can – play back the video and grab and shoot a still, or I can grab a freeze frame off of it. And this, the, the quality is surprisingly good. Huh. And the, uh, the, the, I'm playing right now actually with the uh, digital SLRs to see what can be done with them. And, and the quality is absolutely uh, blowing me away. The, the challenge right now with, with this Glenn though, is that while yes, we can, we can get great, video off of them but we're and the advantage certainly is is that we get to use the lens uh, assortment that's available for digital slrs but there's no autofocus right now and it's not very easy to um zoom that's smoothly and of course the, surprisingly you'd think it wouldn't be hold hard steady hold steady no, but they are that's the big, watch youtube sometime you realize that as your head's bouncing up and down oh, watching yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so, but the, I mean, there are already companies out there that are making specialized custom racks that you can mount your camera on and has the, the neat control dial on the side to, to allow you to focus the camera well. And, you know, there's all kinds of things that are coming out there that are just amazing. So it's, you're going to see a lot of unusual um, looking devices that are actually 35 millimeter cameras that are on these special video racks and people are going to be shooting video and it's definitely where it's going. And it's, it's exciting. In the one hand, it's exciting for somebody like me that shoots still and video. And, you know, as I've aged in life and realized that, you know, I don't like hauling all this stuff around. It enables me to, to lighten my load by carrying the camera and the accessories I need to make it to use video. Um, that's exciting. And, and who knows where it's going to go? I mean, you know, uh, but it's definitely a trend that is happening and happening now. And, and now it's happening quite fast. Yeah. That's, that's um, the thing like, about the internet the and how easy it is to share. anything electronic now, uh, in another year, it's going to be completely different. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I think on one of your other uh, programs we did, I talked about, you know, shooting uh, uh, summer stuff, kids coming out of the horse show. And eventually what you'll be able to do is just, you know, shoot the video and let them come out and then grab a freeze frame and send that to on YouTube or, um, you know, to whoever wants to see it, to grandma, grandpa, whatever. Um, you know, it's that's where it's going, and it will be very easy to do. I mean, I've got one of the new iPhones, and I've noticed on the apps, 
program, there's actually editing software available to actually edit the video in your iPhone, which absolutely blew me away. Well, I haven't I, tried I, it, but I went, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is true. And, and you know, the, one of the coolest things about the new iPhone is that app where you can uh, take a picture of a product and then it brings up the Google search. For, for that yeah. product, that's amazing. That's just it recognizes yeah, I mean, the it, product, and <laughs> just that blew me away. Yeah, I it, it is it, it it is changing, and that's the point. I mean, people that are you know that are thinking about well, I want to buy a, a thirty five millimeter camera, and I want to buy a, a digital still camera. I mean, take a look at, at buying one of the ones that combines both. I mean, you still you still have to learn the principles of of, of shooting good video. I mean, it's um it's it's not just a matter of of Pointing and shooting, and I mean, there's a, there's a shooting video is a whole different mindset to shooting um, stills because as a still photographer, I'm looking at capturing the story in a moment and telling the story in a moment. As a videographer and an editor, I'm looking to try and tell that story in a series of moments. And so you're constantly shooting video, going, well, where do I go from here? You know, especially with horses, it's horses are. are Whenever I, I think about explaining, you know, what you're doing when you when you videotape a horse, you're choreographing motion. Right. And so it's a whole different mindset. And I think we have actually done a tip or two on that that people can go back to horsetipdaily.com dot yeah. com and do a search yeah, for so. uh, do a search for Scott's past tips, and and uh, we'll we'll find a couple of those. Well, Good. Good. I, where can people find you? Oh, well, somewhere in an airport. Um, <laughs> but if you want to try and find me online, it's www.treesmedia.com. And you have uh, actually prints for sale there. And, I do. Uh, some and very, we're adding very to that. Cool ones. I'm getting ready to put a bunch more up there. And uh, we're announcing some seminars that are going to be going on. So there's a lot of stuff happening. Okay, great. And that's uh, treesmedia.com, right? Got that right? Yes, Glenn. That's yes. good. Cool. All right. Thanks, Scott. We'll have you back again. All right. Take care. Well, that was a fun conversation with Scott about the future of photography, and I really appreciate him taking time out of his busy, busy schedule to be joining us here on a regular basis on the Horse Radio Network, the Horse Tip Daily Show. Well, we'll be back again tomorrow, everybody, with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, stay safe, everyone.